Hello, my name is Ponchi. This video is to show you how to perform two updates uh, on, on your printer. Uh, and I'll be shipping all the new ones with uh, these upgrades. Uh, so the first thing was, um, just to make it easier, I put springs, uh, on, like a lot of people do, on the uh, four points for the heat bed. Uh, rather than having that nylon uh, washer, or, or spacer that was collapsible. This makes it much easier to adjust uh, you know, your bed if you have to tweak it a little bit here and there. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and so I'll put on the website, I'll have links to where you can purchase these, and these work great. And all you have to do is back out the screw, and you can do it one at a time, put the spring in, and then screw it back down. Of course, you're going to have to recalibrate uh, the Z axis, um, make sure that this table is. Uh, leveled correctly. And uh, there's another video uh, on my website for that. Um, but the main update that I just performed was the Z-axis. And this has a Hall fix sensor on it. And this sensor uh, sticks out on three little legs. And a lot of times people would touch it and it would just bend a little bit. And so that would throw your whole printer out of whack and you wouldn't have the clearance necessary for your, uh, you know, between the nozzle and the, and the heat bed. So um, I decided to do away with the Hall effect sensor and put a mechanical one. But, uh, you know, with a mechanical one, it's very hard to uh, adjust it. You have to loosen the screw and make fine adjustments like that. Plus, it would take very long. So what I did is I actually developed a software for the firmware that would, uh, you would be able to do all that with the uh, LCD, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in another video. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to make the up upgrade on your uh, printer that you have, if yours doesn't already have a new upgrade. So, first thing you want to do is, of course, have power off. And uh, after that, we're going to uh, have to remove these two screws so that we can loosen this up to get uh, this guy off and so uh, let me grab some tools and I'll be right back So the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove these two screws That uh, hold the, the nut block on uh, and the reason for doing that is so that we can uh, move the uh, anti-wobble uh, Arm back out a little bit to get that clip out uh, from the maker slot so make sure that you have the unit powered off, and we'll back these two out. And you can just leave all that loading there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up the screw that's holding that end stop. So we've just removed that. Now you want to keep this screw for the, for the other plastic mount, which is different. Uh, now, before you go taking this apart, I recommend that you actually go and print uh, one or two copies of uh, the actual um, uh, new Z-axis mount, uh, which is uh, listed uh, in the, um, on the website. So you can download it and print it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clip, now make sure that you have the power off, we're going to clip all these wires. And we're going to take the two screws, the 256 screws, we're going to take those out because we're going to use them again on our new board. And we will not be using these again. Uh, you can either trash them or save them for something else. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to solder uh, the new sensor on here and then mount it onto here. And then uh, I'm going to show you that next. Next we want to take and strip a little bit, about a quarter of an inch, maybe less, each of these wires so that we can solder them to the board. 
This is 22 gauge, so you'll have to use the, the uh, hole there that's marked with 22. Next, we're, we're going to go ahead and tin these wires up. And tinning just kind of gets the solder on the wire because the wire, the solder has flux in it. We'll do the same to the board. So now you can see that we've got uh, these tinned up and, and the three wires. And um, you'll notice that on the board it's written here, looking at it like this, the top one is SIG, which is the signal, and that's the blue wire. And then the next one in the middle is ground, G and D, and that's the black one. VCC is the power, which is the red one. So I'm going to put a little bit of solder on my tip here. And I'm going to start out with, and you can separate these out a little bit so it'll be easier. Just bend them out that way so it'll be easier. You don't want to touch them. What you don't want to do is you don't want these to short. And make sure that you have the printer uh, completely unplugged to do this. So I'm going to start off with uh, VCC, which is the first one on that side, which is the red one. I'm just going to bend these down a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on the tip and try to line them so they're parallel. That's it. So I've got that one soldered. Next I'll do the, uh, the black one that's in the middle. All the blood joint gets cold. And I've got one last one here, the blue one. And I'm just moving it around to get it nice and parallel so I don't risk them touch each other and cause them to short. If you short, uh, you could burn the uh, board up on the top. Okay, so that's finished. And what I like to do is just so that we don't ever have an issue with them shorting, is I like to get this uh, liquid tape. Um, it's electric, uh, liquid electrical tape. And uh, this works really good. It's pretty good for high temperature. And I just put a generous glob on it. And what that's going to do is if anybody were to ever pull those while the machine's on or, or a screwdriver fell on it, it wouldn't allow them to short together and burn the board. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount uh, the end stop onto uh, the plastic mount. And uh, you definitely want to print this up, maybe the two, before you get started on this. Um, that way you'll have a working machine to print this. And um, you'll be able to download the uh, STL file for this part on the website. We're going uh, to get the, the screw in here. What I do is I get one side started, and then I'll get the other one going. And there's just two screws, one on each uh, on the opposite corner. Screwing that in until it's nice and tight. Don't want any movement on this. Okay. So now we need to uh, get the clip that was in here out. The only way to do that is, uh, and that's why we loosened up these two screws over on this side, the nut block. Um, you can't uh, pull it out uh, because this thing is here. You can do two things. You can loosen this up and pull the whole thing out, um, or you can turn this and make this thing up, come up here, and because there's more play up here, you can, you can probably pull it out and slide that thing up. I think I'm gonna go the route of, uh, Moving this. Okay. Got to raise this a little 
like that. Okay, so I've got that out. And we want to take this top, move the camera a little bit. We want to take this top cap off. And now with a screwdriver, you just slide this thing on up here. This is the nut that was uh, used to mount the other one. And I'm just going to take it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that same nut. And we're going to slide it down in here. Oh. Now, let me zoom this camera in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Turn on some lights here. I think it's a little dark. Okay, that should be a little better. So, now what we have to do is mount. This guy's going to go in there like that. I'm going to get the screw that we had in there before. And screw it right into that nut. Now I'm going to have it loose. Now what you want to do is you want to have the bed so it's touching the bed. Just kind of let it fall on there. And that's going to tell us where we need to have this thing. And where we want it is we want to Push it up until you hear the click. And maybe even go just a tad further. And then just tighten it up. And we're going to put this thread or drog back on. Zoom out a little bit here. I'm just putting the threaded rod back on. Let's make sure that's snug. And finally, we're going to screw this nut black. Sorry, nut, the nut black back on. Two screws back in. What I do is I get one started and then put the other one in. No one they're too, too tight. This is plastic. Just want to make sure that it's seated well. And that's perfect. We'll put this cap back on. So that's all you have to do to upgrade the uh, Z-axis end stop and the, uh, the springs on the table. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually use the software. Uh, let me back up here a little bit. So in the next video, uh, I'm going to show you how to do the calibration with this new setup. And I think uh, everybody's going to find it a lot easier and uh, just a lot more reliable. And um, I've, uh, I'll, I'll have the uh, upgraded firmware. There's also a video on my website to explain how to update the firmware. But there's going to be a new release um, that is going to uh, have all the software required to use this setup. And you'll be able to adjust um, the Z-axis offset using the software. It's going to be a lot, a lot easier. So anyhow, um, good luck, um, and uh, thank you for watching this video.